Hi there guys, welcome back to the Solo YouTube channel. Hope everybody's doing very well out there indeed. For anyone who's new here, this is the official channel for the Solo app created by myself and David Beebe. And we upload regular weekly content to help you get the most out of the app. So be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. And of course the bell notification icon to make sure you never miss any more of the content that we upload here. So for this week's video, I want to talk about two of the levels within the changes trainer that could potentially cause some confusion as to why they're useful. They're a little bit different to any of the other levels that are in Solo. And that is the SUS2 and SUS4 resolving levels. Now, these are really useful for two very specific reasons. They enable you to visualize the fretboard in such a way that you can start to develop your polyphonic or more than one note at a time uh, improvisation or visualization on the fretboard. And I'll go through how I would do that. But they also enable you to start to get into some of the more basic forms of uh, visualizing scale tones around an existing chord tone. So in this case, around the root notes and the third, visualizing both the two and the four, and then resolving those to either the third or the root notes. So it's a very useful level in that regard. And both of these sounds, resolving the two up to the three or down to the root, and resolving the four down to the three, are really beautiful, useful sounds within the context of lots of different genres, whether it be jazz standards that you find within the app, or whether it be more kind of pop and rock based progressions. They're very, very useful things to be able to visualize on your instrument. So without further ado, let's dive into Solo and we'll check out those two levels and I'll show you how I would practice with them and why they're really useful to someone like me when I'm improvising in a live or studio based context. Okay, so the first thing for us to do here is to check out where we can find these levels. So we go to the changes trainer here, tap on levels and you will see, as we scroll back up to the top here, we've got our chord tones, then some melodic structures and voice led structures. And they're actually underneath the voice led structures here. We've got suspended two resolution and suspended four resolution. So at any point, as usual, you can tap on the I here and it will tell you more about the level. Okay, so this says suspended two, resolving to three and then one. Okay, so suspended four, if I tap on the eye, would be suspended four, resolving to three and then one. Okay, so if I select suspended two resolution, I've selected the standard all things you are here. This will work with any of the changes that are built into uh, Solo and it will always sound really nice actually. These um, levels, if you do them in a certain way, sound fantastic. So I'm gonna hit start changes workout here and you will see that Solo is asking over this F minor seven for the two of that particular chord, the intervallic function of two. It's then gonna resolve that up to the three and then down to the one. So your job is to find those intervallic functions in as many different ways as possible. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna explain why this is useful from a kind of improvisational and um, kind of polyphonic improvisational perspective, if you like. So over this F minor seven, the first thing I'm gonna do is locate the root note because that's gonna be my source of, um, my, my positional kind of uh, point of reference for finding the other intervallic functions. So I'm gonna use this F just here. Then I'm gonna play the two, which I'm gonna locate here at the fifth fret of the D string. Solo recognizes it. Then I'm gonna play the flat three and then the one. Obviously then solo is gonna move on to the next chord and I'm gonna play the two of the B flat minor seven. The flat three, of course, as usual, solo is mapping these out for you onto each of these given chords. Flat three, and then one. Same thing for the C flat seven. So this time we have a natural two, a natural or major third, and then a one, so on and so forth. You can work your way through. And as usual, Try and do this in as many different places and as many different positions on the guitar in as many different configurations, ascending and descending. So two, I'm gonna go up to the three here at the fifth fret of the G string, and then the one. Now already we get in these nice little melodies. So here's the chord. The next chord. Beautiful little melody. So 
So this structure in of itself is very pretty sounding, it's very melodic sounding. So just in that regard, this is a great level to do because it's a very melodic sound that you can map out over all the changes within a particular tune. And it will always sound good no matter what the changes are. Even if you end up with a flat two, for example, over the chord, because it's suspended and then resolves, it's going to work, it's gonna sound good. So if we did the same thing now for the suspended four resolution, we get a very similar result, but this time we're gonna do four, then the three, and then the one. And again, Solo is gonna map the relevant intervallic functions for us over each of the chords. Solo has mapped out the four, resolving down to the flat three, and then the one. So a little melodic sequence again, including that resolution of the four down to the three. So the suspended resolution down to the flat three. So here's my F minor seven. So I could play four, flat three, one. B flat minor seven. I could play four, flat three, one. E flat seven. Again, so I could play. Here we've got a sharp four because it's mapped out the correct diatonic fourth for this particular key. Again, a beautiful sound. So this little resolution, hopefully you can start to hear how it works. Again here we've got the sharp four, and then so it's a beautiful sound un unto itself. Now if you start to map these sequences out, so you've got the two, the three, and then the one, or the four, the three, and the one. They're really useful because you can start to create some very beautiful sounds with them in a polyphonic sense. So polyphonic means improvising with, or playing, I should say, not just improvising, but playing more than one note at a time. Okay, so in this instance, we're gonna be playing two notes at a time and working through, once we've actually figured out where these notes are on the fretboard, where these intervallic functions are, this is actually how you can apply some of the information that you've learned from solo in a musical context. Okay, so let's stick with all the things you are. We'll stick with our suspended two resolution in this case, and let's start the changes work out here. Oops, if I can tap in the right place. So now we've got two, flat three, and one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna create a chordal structure where I resolve the two down to the one. So I'm gonna take the two, the flat three in this instance, and then resolve the two down to the one. So how am I gonna do this? Well, let's say for instance, we take this F just here, okay? At the eighth fret of the A string. I can locate its two, two frets higher, so at the 10th fret, and its flat three I can locate at the sixth fret of the D string. Now if I've done the work with this particular level, I should be able to do that fairly quickly. Now what I can do is I can play the two, and the flat three, and then resolve the two down to the one. Bam, bam, bam. So we get that. It's beautiful. So I'm playing this little dyad structure, polyphonic structure. So the two and the flat three together, which is a clash that then resolves down to the one. The two, the clash note, or the, the non chord tone resolves down to the one. That's my F minor seven. Let's now do the same thing for the B flat minor seven that we've got here. So here's the chord. Let's find the two and the flat three together and then resolve that two down to the one. So we had this. Okay, now let's do the same thing for E flat seven. So we get the two, here's the one E flat. The two is here. The three on the next string will be at the fifth fret. So we've got the eighth fret of the A string and the fifth fret of the D string. I'm gonna play them one after the other so that Solo knows I've played them correctly. And then resolve the two down to the one. So that was. Now let's do the same thing for A flat major seven. So here's the root note, A flat. Find the two, find the major third in this case and then the one. 
Okay, so just to show you that within the context of this particular tune, we've, we get, here's the chord changes. F minor seven to B flat minor seven, to E flat seven, to A flat major seven. Okay, if I do this now with this particular structure, so two, flat three, one, and then the same thing for B flat minor seven. There's my E flat my, uh, dominant seven. So you can hear the clash that then resolves. Same thing for A flat major seven. Beautiful sound. So again. Sorry. So you can play them like that as, as kind of um, structures where you play the notes together, or you can let them ring into one another as separate notes. Some of you guys might prefer that sound. It's a really, really pretty sound that you can play. Okay, now if you get good at that, you can start to do the same thing now, but you can incorporate the fifth in there as well if you wanted to. Now that's not in the level per se, but for instance, if you get good at resolving that two down to the one or up to the third, because that's what this level is teaching you to do, is to resolve that two, or in the case of the four, resolve the four down to the, uh, the, the three, the flat three, you can start to incorporate the fifth in there as well. So let's say we stick with this suspended two resolution. Okay, so what I can do here is I can take, let's say a structure like this. Here is my F for the F minor seven. Let's go back into solo here. Okay, so I need to find the two, the flat three, and the one. Okay, so let's go back out of the app here. Let's find those notes again. So here's my F, two, flat three, and one. Here's a real world application of that knowledge. I'm gonna take the fifth below. Now I know where that is because I've worked through all my chord tones in the app. Let's say you've worked through all of the chord tone levels and you're really good at finding the fifth. What you can now do is create a structure where you take the two and you resolve it down either to the one or up to the third. Okay, so here's my F minor seven. Or you could take the uh, the two and the flat three and resolve the two down to the one. So you're starting to improvise, hopefully, or just be able to visualize multiple notes at a time where you can add some tension or suspended kind of nature to this particular chord progression with little bits of melodic um, structure, if you like, or little bits of melodic kind of nuggets, if you like, that you can manipulate in real time by utilizing your knowledge of the fretboard. So if we come back out again now, we go to this suspended four resolution and we do the same thing. Let's try and find these particular intervallic functions again. So here is my F. I'm gonna go up to the four, down to the flat three, and then to the one. Same thing for B flat. Let's do it here. So I've got good at this. What can I do now? Well, in this instance, this is actually even easier because it's much more easy to see or easier to see. If I find my F root note, let's play the four above. There's my suspension. I'm gonna resolve the four at the third fret of the G string down to the flat three. Now I do the same thing with B flat minor seven. If we go into the app here, Okay, let's find these notes. So here's the one. Let's play the four, the flat three resolved down to the one. Okay, same thing for B flat minor seven. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play them together as a dyad or as a polyphonic sound. So, and Solo's got no problem with that if you want to do that you can see it's still recognizing the notes. Because the note recognition algorithm is good enough, so long as you've calibrated well. You know, I'm a little bit out of tune and it's still working as well. Sorry about that, guys. 
So this is a great way of starting to improvise, or at this point you're obviously not improvising, but later down the line once this is in your um, kind of bag of tricks of fretboard knowledge, if you like, or your kind of subconscious, you can start to improvise with this stuff. And you could start to mix and match these things. So for example, if I'm playing over all the things you are, I might have a little uh, suspended fourth resolution. So here's my F, play the suspended fourth, resolve down to the flat three, down to the root. Then when we get to the B flat minor seven, maybe I'd choose the two. Now in this instance, maybe when I get to the E flat um, seven, maybe I play the three here, the flat two up here, sorry, not flat two, the two, and then resolve to the one. Then when we get to the A flat major seven, maybe I play a four. Now for the D flat major seven, maybe I play three, two, resolve that to one, so on and so forth. Then with the, uh, the D minor seven, maybe I would play in this instance, the two, down to the three, the flat three, uh, down to the root, sorry, not the, not the flat three. And then when I get to the G7, I might play, let's say in this instance, I might play the flat seven and resolve the four down to the three. And then, so in this instance for the C major seven, I'm playing the two, resolving down to the one, and I've got the flat three down here, or like this. And the more you work with solo, working with these levels, visualizing where these intervallic functions are in every permutation, use the limitation exercises that we talk about in the tuition section of the app in those videos, you will start to be able to manipulate these resolutions of sus twos and sus four intervallic functions, suspended, beautifully melodic, very classical sounding resolutions over chord changes in real time. And as I mentioned, you take any of the chord changes within in solo, Let's say we go down to the tune, in this case, let's go down to Infantize. So here, same thing, so we'll map out each of those resolutions, these intervallic functions for the suspended fourth down to the three, down to the one. It will map it out over any of the chord changes, even the most complex of chord changes. And you will always get the right mapping of those particular intervallic functions. It's very good for your ears as well. Try and sing these things as well if you can do. Uh, and make sure that you can hear those resolutions and you'll start to hear them in your playing and uh, you know want to play them and start to be able to improvise with more than one note at a time, which is very, very beneficial. All right, so I hope you found that useful, guys. It's a really, really nice thing to be able to practice within solo. It wasn't there at launch, but we decided we wanted it in there because it's such a beautiful melodic device. So as I say, I hope you find it useful. I hope you found this video useful. And again, if you did, make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons below, and of course the bell notification icon as always. Feel free to contact us via the app, guys. You can click on the support section of the app here. If you go to the settings, you will find contact details for us down here. Help, send feedback, and of course rate the app if you're finding it useful and enjoying your practice time with it. All right, guys, click the links in the description below to check out the app if you haven't already done so. It's available on iOS and Android. My name's Tom Quayle, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.